Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting from the Iridium here in New York City. As you might know, here on the Pace Report of close to seven years, I continue to profile as well as showcase some musicians that are getting ready to one, set the world on fire musically, but are also bringing very, very different voices to this music as well as culture. Tonight, vocalist Kavita Shaw is performing with her trio featuring guitarist Lionel Lueke and her debut album Visions was produced by Lionel and what I really like about this album is she's bringing some very contemporary songs to a very very different ear meaning that she's taking songs like Little Green by Joni Mitchell as well as Paper Airplanes by M.I.A. the rapper but she's bringing her native Indian as well as African as well as other musical influences into the fold. Tonight we sat down and we talked about this brand new record. We talked about her collaborating with Lionel Lueke as well as Greg Osby who really released the record on his Inner Circle music label. We sat down also and we talked about the importance of bringing contemporary music to new and older ears in the jazz sense as well as talk about what really, really makes this music tick for her and what makes her thrive to be one of the great new vocalists on the scene. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Miss Kavita Shaw live here at the Iridium featuring guitarist Lionel Lueke here on The Pace Report here in New York City. has been out for almost a little over a year. How are you musically being perceived 
here in the United States and your friends overseas? Um, well, you know, when I was making visions, um, it was really important to me to show who I am as a person, um, which is not just um, jazz and not just um, one type of world music, but really someone who has lived in a lot of places and appreciates many different types of cultures and languages, and that's part of my musical soundscape as well as my personal landscape. So for me, it's totally normal on my iPod to go from Ali Farka Touré to Herbie Hancock to um, Cesaria Evera to Joni Mitchell to Stevie Wonder to Kendrick Lamar. This is all <laughs> just completely normal. Um, and um, I wanted to show that, I guess, in the album. And I, I think it's been a curse and a blessing because on the one hand, I think a lot of people do get that and um, enjoy and appreciate it. And sometimes um, it's a little too much for people to digest. Um, Sometimes people say, well, you're an Indian singer, um, mixing Indian music and jazz, and that's not really what I'm doing. And um, sometimes people will say, um, I don't know. Um, I mean, that, that's, really, that's really the one I get the most. <laughs> you know. I, I have to ask you this because this album was produced by Lionel Nueke. And Lionel really has done what you've done vocally he's done it musically in his in his recordings and i guess the collaboration let me start that again i'm still leonel luwaki produced this album and what's really interesting about this record is that what he's done musically on his recordings you're doing vocally on your debut record so i guess this collaboration was really kind of meant to be Absolutely. Um, you know, the idea just came into my head um, very serendipitously one day. I didn't plan ahead of time to be working with Lionel, but um, when I thought to myself of who out there could understand what I was trying to do from both the perspective of traditional music and so-called world music, as well as from a perspective of jazz, um, Lionel was really the only you know, not the only person that came to mind, he's not the only person doing this, but he was really the first person that came to mind as someone who's really rooted in those different traditions and really brings it together in a way that's unique and accessible. That was the most important part for me and what I love the most about um, his music is that you feel anyone can appreciate it the jazz nerd studying guitar, wondering what is he playing, as well as just anyone walking in um, who can enjoy the rhythms or the melodies. Um, there's something that can get to anyone, and that's really important for me with my music. You know, Greg Osby has a lot to do with this also, because this is on his Inner Circle music that's label. Right. And Greg has always, in my <laughs> opinion, gone against the grain also. I mean, this kind of full circle explains where music is going right now because I'm noticing now a lot of vocalists now especially female vocalists they're bringing their own ethnic ethnicity to what they're doing is that hard at a time when music especially jazz music and world music is not being heard on a lot of radio stations here in the country um, on the contrary I found that my music has been really accepted and embraced by radio in the country and I've met a lot of people maybe it's not the mainstream or the average person um, that listens to jazz radio all the time but I've met people that have heard my music on the radio especially something like NPR does actually reach a lot of people um, and um, I got an email from a woman in Vancouver asking um, me to put me on my her, my mailing list because she had become a fan of my music and um, so I just wrote back saying oh she couldn't get on the mailing list because there was no zip code in the US and 
I just wrote back saying thank you so much. I'm glad you 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 know enjoyed the music. Um, how did you hear about my music? And she said um, she heard it on the radio, on the local radio, and um, you know that she was having a rough time recently, and the music came at the right time. And so these kinds of stories are very powerful. Um, I think for my generation, I grew up listening to radio, but I live in New York. I don't have a car. Um, it's probably been a good 10, 15 years that I've actively listened to the radio. So radio is not a part of my life, probably most people in my generation. And it's been really eye-opening for me to see how much um, the radio is so important for, for jazz and for artistic music in getting the music out there and in actually reaching people. Day is done, night is come. you for is you are taking contemporary music and you're putting it into your own voice I mean in paper planes <laughs> MIA I mean we're going hip-hop I mean and then we go to Little Green Joni Mitchell and then we start off with Vision Stevie Wonder and I think it's very courageous that you are really relating the music of your generation to older music fans as well as bringing it into a whole nother interpretation with the younger generation. Yeah, it's funny because when we recorded Paper Planes, Steve Wilson, who's playing the solo on um, on that, he, he was really digging the tune. I said, Steve, do you know the original song? And he didn't know it, so I took out my iPod and, you know, start playing it, show him the video explained to him what it's about, and yeah, he was laughing. <laughs> um, but um, I grew up on hip-hop. I grew up in, in New York. 
um, and in the 90s I grew up on Notorious B.I.G. Um, as a nine-year-old I was rapping Notorious B.I.G. I mean this is just part of my life. I was also playing Bach on the piano, you know. Um, so, <laughs> so it's, it's, again it's, all the music I'm engaging in is music I love. If I'm doing a song it's because I connect to the song in some way or another. Um, you know, I love Stevie Wonder, but I'm not playing all of Stevie Wonder's music. So it's, I'm really, am trying to connect to lyrics more than anything. For me, lyrics and words and the message behind them are so important. And as a singer, being able to communicate, I mean, for me, that's what's different, being a singer than an instrumentalist and something um, I feel very proud of is just having this power of the word and then magnifying it with different languages also. it's there's a lot of poetry musically in just the language. Um, each song is like a poem, each lyric is like a poem. And um, so the songs I'm picking to, to arrange um, are songs that are really spoken to me or that I feel I have something different to say on that hasn't already been said even if it's, you know, been out there. And another important part of this debut record is you didn't do any standards on this record. You came out the gate. I did do one. I did Trishi. That oh, but still, <laughs> would you really consider that a standard? It's a Brazilian standard. It's a, it's a Jobim jazz Jobim, standard. Jobim, okay. And I did Wayne Shorter's um, Deluge. Mm. So maybe not, you know, traditional great American songbook standard. Right. Right. But um, I did write lyrics to to Wayne Shorter's tune Deluge, and. Um, and I did, you know, the Joe Beam tune. <laughs> now understand that you did not come into music. You 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 sang in choir when you were a teenager, but when you went to college, you were not into the music. How did you segue well, back into the music bug? Well, the choir I sang in growing up, it was not just in high school. It was from the time I was 10 years old. And... Um, it's called the Young People's Chorus of New York City. It's an amazing uh, professional level children's choir. So I was performing at Carnegie Hall on a regular basis. I was traveling, touring, um, you know. So even though I was part of a choir, um, it was a very intense musical education and musical experience. Um, and um, we sang all types of music from <laughs> Wonder where I get it from. From gospel to classical to um, folk music from around the world, like Estonian folk songs and Swahili folk songs, and literally everything under the sun we sang. Um, so when I went to college, I, I, I went to Harvard and studied Latin American studies, the music department there at the time. It's changed a lot, but at the time it was um, it was a pretty theoretical department, and my interest in music was really as a practi practitioner. Um, so I knew that wasn't going to fit, and I was really interested in literature, and Spanish and Portuguese, and it just seemed like um, the best fit at the time. But in this major, I ended up spending a lot of time in Brazil and I actually wrote my thesis in college about Afro-Brazilian music. And when I was living in Bahia, in Salvador, um, I started working with a local musical group doing research um, on Afro-Brazilian music and the Black Power Movement. And I spent a lot of time involved with them musically and seeing how um, music and social issues and identity could all intersect together. And that was a kind of spiritual awakening for me. Um, so that brought out a lot of music in me and desire in me to say, okay, no, this is really what I want to do. I just have to figure out how to, how to do it. So you're basically saying your, your travels and where we are now musically with visions was your Brazilian, your Indian nationality, as well as African music, you really kind of was like, okay, this is me, and I've got to bring this to the forefront. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, 
my relationship, well, my nationality is American. I'm, I grew up in the U.S., um, so my parents are from India, um, and I'm very much a New Yorker. Um, so it's these are different places and different musics that have had a really deep impact on me, um, but not maybe in ways that one would think, right? Um, my I, my par I grew up in a in an Indian household, but not necessarily in a traditional household. Um, grew up speaking English at home. My family wasn't very religious, so um, I came to Indian music sort of later in life, much after jazz. Um, so, in fact, as a jazz musician, as someone interested in my heritage, that's how I see myself as engaging in Indian music. For me, with Visions, it's choosing to have the tablas as a part of my band. That's a sonic choice that's engaging in my heritage. Um, but in music, that's very much rooted in jazz, you know. So again, it's not necessarily the way you would expect. Um, and uh, of course, my time in Brazil had a really big impact on me. I can think. I think you can feel it in the repertoire and in the, in the, um, in the music. You know, maybe uns in unsaid ways as well. Um, and um, speaking about Africa, as you mentioned, um, you know, the kora, the West African harp, is a big part of this recording. I'd studied Somalian music in college, and. Um, met some people in the community that one after another led me to Yakuba, my Kora player, Yakuba Sissoku. And, um, you know, just a type of music that I've been listening to for a very long time, different uh, Afropop from, from West Africa. Say to me, won't you tell me where my love can be? Is there a meadow in the mist where someone's waiting to be kissed? Gala? Have you seen a valley deep with spring where my heart can go a journey? busy man you are a solo artist and now you are a producer you produce Kavita's very debut record and first of all tell me how you guys met and musically how did you want to bring her musical ideas to the forefront musically well we we met here in New York um, you know she sent me um, first of all an email asking if we could meet and and talk about the, the, the recording, you know, uh, for me it's always uh, important to hear what I'm going to uh, to produce to produce or co-produce or even when I, if I, I'm just as a guest as a guitar player, I always like to hear the track before and see if, how I can fit the music and how I can bring something. And once I heard her music, I was like, all right, let's do it because. It's kind of, um, I kind of see myself into her music. It's like just a, a, a melting pot, a mix, a mix of different styles, you know. 
and she got it. She got it all, you know, African, Brazilian, Indian, American, you know, so it was fun working with her and I'm very proud of her and I'm, I'm just hearing more and more about her. Even in Africa, you know, people are telling me, you know, I saw a video with you and uh, Kavita and you, and, you know, people are talking more and more about her, but I'm sure she is going to do great, you know, because she has the talent for, you know. Your music, she's interpreting your own songs, and yeah. how did that really manifest when you heard her record it in the studio and then now she's performing them live in front of the audience? Well, you know, the, in front of the audience it's always different because it's a whole different energy, you know, and that absolutely affect the music. Um, as you as you heard tonight, you know, it's, it's pretty different on the recording. It should supposed to be different on the recording because that was a, a very typical moment um, in our life and we are in a different place now and if we have to do it right now it's going to be different and that's why we like jazz and and uh, improvisation music you know it's part of what we do and get the energy from the from people listening Thank you. 